Welcome to Contextual Electronics. My name is Chris Gamble. Today we're going to go over a question that I got from the YouTube comments, which was about the clearance from the edge of the board <coughs> related to the ground plane that we were drawing. And so I wanted to take a quick look at this. It actually relates to the uh, properties of the, any plane that you're drawing here. And I'm not sure how much we actually went over that when we went through uh, when we went through the initial drawing of it. So let's take a look here. So this is the board we added that that plane to. So let's go and enable it here. And what we see is that it does actually have a clearance from the edge of the board here, right? So this is the board edge, and there's some amount that it's not going all the way to the edge. Now, some of that is just practical because you know you're not going to want to have your copper actually all the way to the edge of your board because when they take a router and they cut out your board, then uh, you'd have actual copper exposed. You want to actually have some some FR4 between it, and when the copper starts, you don't you couldn't touch the edge of the board with you know another piece of metal and short out that ground plane. So that's uh, actually pretty important here. But let's uh, let's select the zone outline. So we'll do the ground plane, and then I'm going to mouse over, hit E, and this brings up the the thing that we actually started when we drew it here. So this is uh, oh I'm actually in inches here. So I'm going to actually leave this because it it looks a little bit nicer for how I drew this one. Um, and so, uh, so you can see we have a couple different things here. We have the various nets that we have possible, and we did choose uh, uh, the ground net. Uh, we put it on the ground layer, and then we start having things like clearance, minimum width, anti-pad clearance, and spoke width. Now, some of these things are related to the default pad connection, but first things first, let's figure out how we're going to actually change this width here. So let's take this down to 0 0.02. Now this is much less than our fab could actually do, so that's an important thing. This is actually the number that, uh, the, that the fab will tell you we can do you know, 6 mil space, 6, bil, 6 mil trace. So let's actually do 6 mil. What we should see is we should see this ground plane, the, the gap here, uh, narrow a little bit. Let's see. And there we go. We did see it. Uh, we did see it narrow a little bit. Now, another thing that you may or may not know, a shortcut key that I use a lot, is B and Control B. So if I hit Control B, it actually undraws all of the nets, all of the planes that we have here. If I have B, it redraws it, which is really nice too, because as you move stuff around here, actually that one's not going to impact it. Let's move. Let's move this via right. So you might have something moved and it hasn't redrawn it. If you hit B, it does go and redraw it there. Now, obviously, I moved it off a trace, so I'm going to undo that. And B again to redraw. Now let's go back into here and uh, I mouse over hit E. I'm going to select the ground plane again. Let's do other things here. Uh, so we, we change the clearance a little bit, but uh, let's do something like the anti pad clearance and the spoke width. Now this should actually impact things like uh, this pad over here. You see there's actually a through hole pad from the ground, or sorry, from the connector that's going down to the ground plane. And so we're going to change that. First things first, let's change the actual type. Now I often find myself using solid just because I like how it looks, and I think, you know, if I'm doing reflow on a board, the thermal relief is a lot less important. What this basically does is thermal relief has fewer copper connections here, so it's e easier to actually apply a solder iron and to draw solder or to to heat up that element so that you can solder will flow to it. If you have it solid, then it's going to actually, you know, connect it completely to the ground plane. You basically have to heat up the entire ground plane around here before it will uh, do that. So let's do that first. Hit B to redraw. And you see now this is actually on the ground plane. You see now that there is a connection here that is completely connected. So now there is no break in the copper, uh, and so it's just an exp this this pin one here is just basically a uh, it's just going to be an opening in the solder mask at this point because just the copper is available here. So that's uh, that's just how that has changed. Now if we go back in, mouse over, hit E, hit the ground plane again, we can undo that. We'll go back to thermal reliefs. And then we can start changing things like now let's do that first, right? So now we're back to here, and now we can change things like the anti pad and the spoke width. So first thing, so let's change the spoke width. This actually changes how much is connected. You see that that trace there, that that what looks like a trace, it's actually just connected to part of it there. And so we're going to widen that up a little bit. You see it actually has widened. So you know, for depending on how you uh, you know how you're connecting things, this spoke width can be you know uh, basically it has more copper connection to that point. Now this is a very, very big connection. This is also going to apply for anything where you had, so if you had something on the top layer, uh, these are all through hole points, so it might be OK to leave this as a wider spoke width. But if you were on the top layer and you're connecting to the pad of like a, uh, to one of these guys here, then the spoke width would, would be far too big. And so uh, and we can, we can draw that real quick here. Let's, see, let's grab one of the, uh, one of the uh, let's turn that layer back on, actually. So let's do, let's do a small V ground pour, right? So we can do that real quick. We need to go here. We go V ground pour on the top side, and we should be able to envelop. There we go. And you see, this is the same thing. So now we have a, a spoke 
that connects to the pin 12, which is the vground. And we can change that as well. You might want to have it quite that big, though. So, right? so if you have a smaller, a smaller spoke, then it's a less of a connection here. Now, the other thing we have is anti-pad connection. If we hit that uh, ground, uh, if we have that there, if we have the clearance, we can basically say, OK, so now when we're actually connecting to a pad with a thermal relief, we want to actually have that move out or in a little bit. And so let's move this into the uh, minimum width that we set there. And you see it actually does, it basically gives less clearance around that pad there. And so this is a way that you can use the uh, plane drawing tool to change your uh, change how it actually contacts the different pads that are going to be connected to that, that plane. And again, so we can modify this one more time. We can go really far out. So let's go to 0.02. And now, it's, now, now what you see is, OK, now there has to be such a clearance here that the connection has to make an even longer hop over to it. And so that's important to know. Now, this is actually because I drew a trace here. So if you undo that, you see a little bit more. This is because I went over top of a trace. So there we go. This is what it actually looks like there. And uh, yeah, so so there's a lot of different options you can have here. You know, really, because you can draw and, re and undraw uh, the planes very easily, I do recommend you play around with these. I think it's a, you know, it's a good tool to have. And I change planes uh, quite often. Uh, I change the, uh, you know, how, how I might want to do things and how the clearances are and, and how, how things feel for the, uh, you know, the, the different gaps around components and, and things like that. Because you can often, you know, if you zoom out as well, you can kind of see how, how, the, uh, how the entire pour is going to look. And if it's, you know, if it's got really, really wide clearances, it might look like Swiss cheese, but you, know, you, you might, uh, might want to tighten that up a little bit. So this is just a quick look at, uh, at the ground planes here and the pour tool and how to get the plane a little bit closer to the edge there and get that clearance turned down a little bit. So if you do need to move the plane a little bit closer to the edge, you can do it with this. Remember, you do not want your plane to go all the way to the edge of the board because it would be exposed, and your fab house will probably complain at you about it anyways. So that's all for now. We have more about drawing ground planes and power planes and left planes, right planes, and up planes, and down planes, and everything else here on Contextual Electronics. If you have any questions about it, you can go over to the forum. That's forum.contextualelectronics.com. If you have any questions about the feature itself, you can always go to the KiCad forum. That's forum.kiCad.info. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.